Hello, this is the Incense Critic, and I thought I would give a simple demonstration on how to make an incense wand, or smudge stick. Smudge sticks have been regarded for centuries for their ceremonial and aromatherapeutic significance. They're very simple forms of incense, wherein herbs are bundled together and dried. They are very simple to use, however, they can be rather less exact in portioning as they neither burn all the way through nor can they be easily burned in increments of distinct nature. Today I am going to be bundling a number of species from the genus Artemisia. Palmer's Sagewort or San Diego Sagebrush Douglas's mugwort, California sagebrush, and silver sagewort or white sagebrush, or my, white mugwort as it may be known. First, you will want to arrange the herbs in the manner in which you wish to bundle them. As an experienced smudge stick maker, I will be consider concerning myself with how the finished smudge sticks will be presented. And I wish to show that <clears throat> This smudge stick has been made with a variety of herbs while maintaining general structural stability. Do not be afraid to hesitate and consider different arrangements that you may make with your smudge sticks, but also consider that you are not going to want to dry this with heat for it will evaporate some of the vital essential oils and other components that will contribute to the aromatherapeutic and incense effects. As you may see I have chosen some clippings that are uneven. It is not necessary that they be even. However, since I have the choice and the prerogative, I shall endeavor to make it as presentable as possible. I believe I can remedy this situation without the use of clippers or scissors or some other way of further manipulating the plants. Another thing to consider with some of the more leafy herbs that can be used for making smudge sticks to make sure that there is at least some airflow to the center of the smudge stick as this will be important when drying. Now it is time to consider something to bind it with. I prefer cotton or hemp twines for they are easy to procure and also biodegradable and non-toxic. You should never use a petroleum-based thread, although cotton threads can also be used. Nylon threads and the like can be harmful when burned and release toxic vapors. So never use them when making a smudge stick. Another tip is to ensure that you have enough thread. You can always cut some back and it is not expensive. I would recommend a cotton twine like this if you're just starting out, even if you want 
the finished product to be decorative. After it is fully dry, you may unwind it and if done properly, it will hold together and you may bind it again with a more decorative thread. You want to make sure that you can complete the job with just one strand. And once more, I shall inspect my bundle before I begin tying it together. This looks good. A no tie option is to run it, run the one end along the length of the smudge stick and begin to bind. While this is valid, relevant, and very easy, I prefer to use a series of knots, the first of which is a square knot to bind the base together. An overhand knot can easily be, be in place of this. However, I like to be on the safe side. If you do tie at the base, make certain that once you begin to bind, you do so in the direction of the knot. This will help ensure that the knot will not go untied. Now secure the base and begin to wrap. Again, I am taking careful attention to presentation, but this is not necessary and the leaves will not necessarily need to go all the same direction. Since at the time that I harvested, I ensured that all of the cuttings that I harvested were all the same size. So now that the base is thoroughly tied, the herb bundle will stay together. I am tying this rather tight and may indeed go back after this is all dry and consider retying it with less binding material so as to improve the presentation. However, since I am binding a plant with very with very unique shaped leaves and varied sized leaves, 
I am making several passes around the bundle. And since I have extra, I have the opportunity to go back round and attempt to secure any leaves that have evaded the strings thus far. And now to secure, since I did start with a knot down below, I have excess, excess string, which I may use with the other end of the string to secure it at the bottom. Here we have a complete yet fresh smudge stick or incense wand. However, this is no, not burnable quite yet. Before it is ready for use, it must be dried. And when considering drying methods, it is best to use one of two methods, the most common, the easiest, and the most accessible is to place this in a an area that is both dry and has high air movement. Such areas can be on a windowsill, tied on a railing, in a drying rack, or otherwise. But it must remain in dry, cool conditions in order to ensure that the <coughs> herbs stay in an environment where their potency can be preserved, as well as preventing or at least reducing the chance of mold growing, which can ruin any incense. The other option is more to be considered if smudge sticks are made in bulk, and that is to use a food grade or incense grade dehydrator. Use the lowest setting if settings are indeed available and let it dry until completely dry. Sometimes this can take significantly longer than you may suspect as the outside of the smudge stick will dry far sooner than the inside. In addition, some plants are semi-succulent, have thick foliage, or are highly durable and contain much water in the stem. If this is the case, it may indeed take some time before the center of the smudge stick or even the leaves are dry enough to smolder effectively. Having said that, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is the Incense Critic, your aromatherapy and incense authority.